Let's talk about text baby. I've been wanting to make that joke for like six months now. Today we are at my Winfinity Foreman Elite and we are gonna be talking about text, specifically in two different types of bits. We're gonna be using our 90 degree groovy bit as well as our 60 degree groovy bit because you can have the exact same text and using two different types of bits are gonna be able to give it two different types of outcome. We're also gonna be going over the type of text that I try and stay away from and the type of text that I actually only offer to clients. Clients. Realistically, I only offer one type of text and that's because it makes for a very good finished product. Obviously, there's so much to go into when it concerns text. So let's go ahead and cut out a little bit of what I'm talking about. So I have some examples to walk through and we'll even go through my design process a little bit because there are a few things to look out for that as well. So let me go ahead, home the machine, zero it, cut out all of our stuff and we'll get back to talking. Our text is complete. Clear out of the way so that we can talk about it a little bit. Has anybody actually gotten one of those little uh, pendant things that help you move it around? If you have gotten one, let me know down in the comments because I feel like it'd be useful. Seems like it is. Beautiful. All right, so let's bring you in and start that talking. Okay, so first and foremost, let's go ahead and talk through how we really got here. I do all of my designing in Canva. It's just really easy. It's a process that I've been using for quite some time. I'm not an affiliate. I don't make any money if you use Canva, don't care. That's where I first started off. And that's where I pulled in all of these different fonts from. Uh, Canva has a great thing. I don't know if it's a pro feature or not, but I certainly pay for it because I use it so often. But you can export SVGs, which is a really great feature except for when you start getting into scripts. Now, text is really cool, but the majority of people out there want scripts. So italics, handwriting, you know, where the letters all bleed into each other. That's pretty difficult when you're exporting individual letters as SVGs, because as you know, letters exist individually. So in order for those things to exist individually and create a word, they have to be individual vectors that bleed in on each other. When you import an SVG like that into a system, it sees each of those letters as individual vectors. Now, when they bleed over each other, that can cause issues with the system. You can go in there and fix it individually one by one, but personally, that's not my favorite thing in the world to do, especially if you're doing a lot of customization and you have you know, 12 orders and each one of those has their own thing. So what I personally like to do is design everything in Canva, save it as a PNG. I dragged that over into Carveco Maker Plus, which is my design software of choice. They are a supporter of Make Timber and they're giving away a perpetual license completely for free at the very end of Make Timber. So super excited that one of y'all is gonna be winning that. I bought this software with my own money. Um, I personally use it and I love it. So, so for my designing process, I save everything that I'm doing as a PNG. I drag it into Carveco Maker and then I use the bitmap to vector tool and then I create vectors with that text. So I take it, I make it into a vector, and then I just assign toolpaths to that vector. Here you can see that I've got the exact fonts. Those are the names of the fonts that I'm using. And then the 60 degree V bit is carving up the upper half. And then the 90 degree V bit is carving the lower half, which I have labeled as you can see here. So now that we have actually cut all this stuff, I wanna talk about the pros and cons and the things that I offer and I don't offer. Spoiler alert. I do everything in intro Rust right here. That is my text of choice and there are so many reasons for it. Specifically right here when it is V carved, you can't really tell but all of the edges have a radius on them. They don't have any type of harsh corners like over here on Lavello that has very harsh corners. So 90 degree angles, which is great when you're doing V bit carving because you can have a really nice crisp letter right here. You can see sailors, it's very similar to that. But the intro to Rust, I use this not only for V-bit carving, but also when I'm doing pocketing. So I could have text and then I could use my, I don't know, quarter inch down shear bit. And then I could carve out that text in my down shear bit. Normally when the text is that size, it's not losing anything. So when you're pocketing this out, you're going to be automatically creating a radius inside of this text when you're using a normal end mill because it's not able to create that little corner right here. So that's one of the things that when I first started off, I really didn't understand what was happening because I couldn't figure out how to get nice, crisp, clean corners when I was pocketing lettering instead of using V-bits. Now, 
V-bits right here, like I said, I've got a 60 degree and then a 90 degree down here. They're gonna give you different results. This 60 degree, oh, actually, let me go grab those bits. Okay, so the 60 degree, as you can tell, it has a much more aggressive angle to it. Therefore, it is going to cut a lot deeper into the material in order to meet the size requirements for the sides, especially if you don't have any type of a depth stop on it. So you're not telling it like, hey, you can't go below, you know, an eighth of an inch. For these, I'm saying, you know, cut so that it makes a nice clean bottom and it's not flat. So it's cutting down to the depth that it needs in order to achieve the distance from the sidewalls. I hope that makes sense. If this text was a lot bigger, we would have a lot deeper trench in there. Just like you can see, this is pretty darn deep and this is a little bit more shallow because this 90 degree bit has a more shallow angle in order to achieve the depth needed to be able to get all of the dimensions for this script. Now that works really well when you're using like an intro to rust or you're using a Lovello. But then look at these weird ones. Um, I can barely even read this. So Laria script, I think is what it's called. It would be foolish of me to talk about like the latest and greatest texts that are out there and what's trending because that changes all of the time. Helvetica is by far like the most classic font ever used in the history of computers. So Helvetica is always gonna be like a very easy, recognizable, and more importantly, legible font to be able to use on your projects. But the majority of the time when somebody wants like their last name or something, they're gonna want some type of a script. This is Findel. You can see right here with the 60 degree, what we were able to achieve, and then with the 90 degree, what we were able to achieve. The 90 degree looks considerably better. It's not trying to plunge in as deep with the 60 degree V-bit because these little tiny lines right here are only barely getting touched with the tip. Whereas they're still only getting barely touched with the tip with the 90 degree, but the angle is a lot more shallow, so it's able to push out on the sides, and it's giving you a little bit more definition when concerning that script. So if you're confused right now, that's why I only offer intro to Rust. That's what this text is made out of, and then obviously the text that's labeled itself. Whenever I go to a client, this is the text that I show them. If for some reason they say, oh, I really don't like that text in particular, then that's when I start offering different things. You can go to Etsy a whole lot and you can see people offer, you know, the last name like Jones and they have it in five different things and says like, hey, pick your exact font one through five and that's what I'm gonna be using. That is such a good way to be able to run your Etsy business because you're only showing the people this is what I offer. They don't have any type of questions. They can easily see that's what that's gonna look like and then they choose one of the options that you give them. This is just covering CNC machining because lasering is an entirely different thing. Obviously you're not worrying about depth as much but you're still worrying about legibility the exact same as a CNC router. If you watched my video yesterday when I was talking about my climbing wall panels, you could easily see that when I made the text with my CNC machine, not only did it take time but there was a whole lot of variables to watch out for when cutting in wood and it just made a whole lot more sense to be able to laser engrave all of the text onto the project itself because it just made a lot more clean and reliable way to be able to mark the project. We would all love to think that everything that we put on our CNC machine is nice and flat and everything's gonna be perfect, but the truth is there's a lot of variability in your material that you're carving. You could have a huge project piece out there and if you have very tiny details like this that you're just really hoping to score into your project, right here it could do really well and then just a foot over, it could completely be missing that. Now people with vacuum tape and they're constantly using really great materials, that's not gonna be any type of an issue. But even for me, when I'm using hardwood lumber, there's oftentimes a little bit of a twist in there and you can run into some issues. So in order to mitigate that, there's two easy things. Use a text that has evenly spaced font, that every single individual letter has even spacing all the way through it, and then playing around with your start depths a little bit lower than the surface of your material. Text is by far the easiest way to upsell your projects. It's by far the easiest way to be able to make money with your CNC machine, and that is custom engraving some type of a project. Even if you're already getting a finished project and you're taking it to your CNC just to engrave, that's what people are looking for. The main reason that people open up Etsy on their computer is so that they can get something that is custom engraved. So obviously this isn't covering everything when it concerns V-bit carving, but hopefully this has been helpful for somebody out there who's just starting off and really looking to where to start. I know that there are a ton of different fonts out there. This is just some stuff that works for me. But at the end of the day, that really just boils down to personal preference, something that I actually like. There are tons of different fonts out there. I would totally play around with as many that you can just to dial in what you are comfortable offering. Thank you so much for all of my Patreons for constantly supporting the channel. I 
really do appreciate y'all and I hope that y'all know that. If you're brand new to the channel and this was helpful, please consider giving this video a like or even subscribing because at the very end of the year, well, in January, I'm gonna be adding up all of the hours that it took for me to be able to create all these videos, that's what you're seeing on the screen right now, the amount of time that it took for me to film this, the amount of time that it took for me to edit this. I'm gonna add up all of those and put those against Google AdSense to see my hourly rate when it concerns this YouTube channel. So if you're interested in the finances behind YouTube and you would like to know more about it, I'll be coming out with that video in January of 2024. If you have any types of tips and tricks or things that you've run into and you would like to put them down in the comments, I would really appreciate that because the more information that we shared the more we learn together and I'm sure there is a ton of stuff that I still have to learn about text so hopefully y'all can offer some insight below. Thank y'all very much for stopping by today. I appreciate you watching. See and see you later. Bye.